Hi, Joshua Curving here with another Death Battle Prediction video. But first, both uh, Gara vs. Toph and uh, the Samus vs. Boba Fett Remastered. Um, for Gara vs. Toph, yes, it was wrong. They downplayed Gara's speed, and of course there was the notorious it's just sand uh, argument. This one's kind of a guilty pleasure fight for me, though, because even though I know it's wrong, um, I, I still like Toph a lot more, so it didn't make me as mad as some other fights that I've been wrong for. Um, though ultimately, yes, Gara should have speed blitzed and one-shot and all the good stuff. Um, I don't have too much else to say on the fight. The animation was good. Um, Akuma TH's custom sprites for Toph were very excellently used. Um, the ending of the fight made sense in its own weird way, um, in that, yes, if she could control his sand, judging from the fact that it's chakra-induced and he has more feats on controlling it, um, then maybe she could crush him in his own armor, but again, it's like a, there were about five different things that it's like, if she can do all five of these, then she has the win, which, realistically, she wouldn't have, like, any of them. Um, so other than that, I see no real reason to linger on the fight. I've said what's wrong and said about how the animation was. Um, so Samus vs. Boba Fett Remastered. Uh, that fight, at first I wasn't too keen on it. Um, Ian then on, in early February, uh, Monty Ohm passed away. Uh, he's actually a huge inspiration for... A lot of people, myself included, and Torian included. In fact, it's actually fairly likely that if I had never heard of Monty Ohm's works, I never would have gotten into animation and game design as I have. Um, so I owe a lot to the guy, and obviously Torian shares the same sentiments, because um, this fight was entirely dedicated to Monty Ohm. Uh, including a nice dance number at the end, and in honesty, Monty would have been proud because that fight was fantastic. Um, it wasn't as long as some of the other 3D animation fights, but it was certainly amazing. Um, the graphics themselves, like th the quality of the models, were far beyond anything we've had in the show so far. Um, the analysis really didn't change as much as I thought it would. They didn't give her anything different besides Zero Suit. Um, there was a lot of stuff that they could have given her, um, like the anti-bio beam, which bypasses all armor. Um, there's just a lot of stuff that they could have done but didn't. And I guess it's more because, hey, she's already winning anyway, we don't need to make it more stompy still, so... Who knows? Um... But yeah, again, just there's not too much to linger on for that fight either. I'm just definitely happy that they did have the references to Monty there. Because, um, yeah, just she was a person worthy of a lot of respect. Everyone at Death Battle uh, was inspired by him in some way or another. Uh, so, yeah. Next fight uh, Chuck Norris versus Sagato Sanshiro. I'll say I'm a bit more excited than a lot of the other Death Battle predictions that I've seen. Um, I know people have been, oh, who the hell is this Sagato Sanshiro guy, blah, blah, blah. I think this is fun as all hell, because as is clear from the demonstration and stuff like that that we got in the preview, uh, they're using Meme Norris. They're using all of his, well, not maybe not all, but some of his jokes, and there are three in particular that we have seen will be used in the fight. The three that we know will be used for Chuck Norris are that when he does a push-up, he pushes the world down. We know he can run around the world and punch himself in the back of the head. And that one, the Big Bang is one Chuck Norris roundhouse kick. So there we have three stats, which are strength, um, he can push the entire world down. So that's planet level minimum. Uh, speed 
is faster than light because in order for him to punch himself in the back of the head, he would have to breach the speed of light and get to all the temporal, timey-wimey, wibbly-wobbly stuff and hit himself in the back of the head before he left, which would require faster than light movements. And then the Chuck Norris roundhouse kick thing means that his roundhouse kicks are the equivalent of universal level stuff, which makes him the strongest person we've ever had on the show. Potentially, barring Chaos Heart Luigi. Still angry about that. Um, so when we have the roundhouse kick that does a big bang damage, that also translates directly into durability because his durability would have to be equal to that roundhouse kick if that force was going back through his leg. Um, so here we have a universal level being who is faster than light up against a guy who can fight robots, um, can carry around a big controller. He, saw, he jumped off a building and stopped a Mach 4-ish missile Cool. So, judging from how fast the missile got up into space, it should be around the Mach 10,000 or something range. Um, we don't know if there was cinematic timing, which is fairly likely, but I'll give him benefit of the doubt. Uh, Mach 10, he stopped the missile, which is probably about building level. Yeah, this is a stomp and a half. Realistically speaking, there's only one weakness that Chuck Norris has that we've really discovered, which is that there was some, I guess, Czech Slovakian commercial, or I think it's just Czech, but yeah. Um, a Czech commercial in which a fish is gutted in front of Chuck Norris and he faints. Um, so if there happens to be a fish involved in Sagata Sanchiro's arsenal, then he has a way of making Chuck Norris pass out. Unfortunately speaking, that is useless to him because Sagata Sanchiro does not have the destructive capacity to kill Chuck Norris, regardless of whether he's passed out or not. If Chuck Norris is indeed universal level durability, Sagata has no way to put him down at all. So, realistically speaking, this doesn't even require a comparison. I've looked at a lot of Sagata Sanchiro's feats. In honesty, they would. There's this line here. We have base Chuck Norris is here, like real life Chuck Norris. Sagata Sanjiro is like right here. And then if you add in movie Chuck Norris, like just his movie feats, he moves to about here. So he would still lose because of all the nuke catching stuff. But then when we have meme Norris, it just goes. <laughs> Can't even see it anymore. So, though there's too much of a line here. They would have been better off using movie Chuck Norris to make a close fight, which would have ended up with Chuck Norris losing. But because they're adding in the memes, it just blows it all out of proportion. Um, unless they can come up with something that puts Sagata even nearly close enough. Um, the whole fight's like a foregone conclusion. Um, it's, I don't think it's necessarily a joke fight, but it's certainly one that people are supposed to turn their brain off and be happy and entertained to watch. I see too many people complaining about Chuck Norris being in a death battle, who the hell is Sagata Sanshiro, um, some people have even complained that they have no business putting a real person up against a fictional character, despite the fact that they're using internet meme Chuck Norris. And then, of course, there's the annoying and extremely present uh, debating of, oh, hey, Chuck Norris's opinions, they're not good. This is not supposed to be this kind of fight. This isn't the fight that's supposed to stir up political controversy and shit. It goes against the entire point of why they wanted to do this fight. It's just supposed to be funny. Especially because they had this video planned as of, like, a couple of years back. Back when they were doing, like, Samus vs. Boba Fett, they wanted to do this fight when Chuck Norris was still in his internet meme highlights. Um, 
other than that, I don't really have too much to say. The animation looks funny, given that uh, Chuck Norris's sprites are old JJBA sprites. That's freaking amazing. Um, so, other than that, there's not too much left to say. Um, I'll see you guys after the next one, and have a good one.